Well, who's a lucky boy then? Today, I not only get to ride the Norton Commando, I get to ride this lovely Yamaha 250cc two-stroke. I've always loved two-strokes. And this is me back in 1973 on my two-stroke Suzuki 500 twin. And of course, I'm dressed in all my safety gear. It's possible I've put on a bit of weight since then. <laughs> This is a 250cc twin and the LC stands for liquid cooled. Don't be fooled by the fact that this is only a 250. Once it hits the power band at about 6,000 revs, it really takes off. This is a very nice handling motorcycle. With its skinny tyres, its light weight, it's effortless to ride. And it just goes round corners by thinking about it. Like all the two-strokes of the era, the two-stroke oil is held in a separate container, so there's no messy having to mix fuel and oil together. This also means that the oil delivery is a lot more efficient, and once the engine's warm, there's very little smoke being blown out the exhaust. If you've never ridden a two-stroke road bike before, you might be fooled into thinking that they're difficult to ride, but that's not the case. Just cruising along through the countryside, doing 80 or 90 kilometres an hour, the bike runs beautifully in top gear, revving at about 4,000 revs. It doesn't feel stressed, and it doesn't feel as though it's underpowered. The bike's physically quite small, but the seating position is um, surprisingly comfortable. I had no problem at all riding it, and I'm 190 centimetres. This bike is fitted with aftermarket expansion chambers, but it's not really that loud. In fact, we can hear the Norton over the sound of the bike that I'm sitting on. Even after a long ride, the sound of this bike wouldn't be annoying at all. The bike has a 5-speed gearbox, and top gear is quite tall. The light clutch and the very smooth gearbox makes it very easy to ride. And in top gear, it just purrs along. Right. This is when a small two-stroke really starts to uh, show its colours, so to speak. We're heading up Bumble Hill, heading towards Jerry's Cafe. It's a fairly steep hill and nice and windy. But this is where the low-down torque, or lack of it, um, comes to the fore with a small two-stroke. You really have to uh, get it into the rev range. 
Now I'm just sort of cruising at the moment and you can hear the engine's not working at all but it's just starting to slow down a bit. And I think it's time to change down a gear. Well, there we go. And as soon as I change down, it hops into the power band and off it goes like a scalded cat. And this is where you feel that 38 horsepower come into play. You can see from the spec sheet that this bike is no slouch. It's got a top speed of the old Imperial Ton and a wet weight of 158 kilos, so the power to weight ratio is significant. But of course the fat lump sitting on the seat doesn't help. You can see that the maximum power comes in at 8,500 revs, which is quite low by modern four-stroke 250s these days. But of course the two-stroke is helped by the fact that it explodes every second cycle rather than every fourth, like a four-stroke. We're arriving at Jerry's Cafe, so it's time to get some breakfast, sit, relax, and enjoy the view of these beautiful old bikes. Let's have a closer look at this machine. It's in pretty good condition. Uh, Norman ha has uh, refreshed all the paintwork, so it's absolutely pristine. But the rest of the bike is pretty good as well. As I said before, it's got aftermarket expansion chamber exhausts that don't look the same as the originals, but they seem to perform okay. <laughs> And the peg needs to be lifted up so that when you kickstart it, you get a full swing on the kickstarter. Speaking of starting, there's no electric start, but starting is an absolute breeze. It starts very easily, as you can see, ticks over without a problem. And it sounds nice and crisp. Now let's compare that to my efforts to start the Norton. Okay, I do admit it, it might be harder to start, but I love riding that Norton. Still, the Yamaha's fun. If you've watched any of my other old bike reviews, you'll see that there's a theme here. Every one of the bikes that I've reviewed are not only fun to ride, but they handle well as well, which you'd think is quite surprising given their age. It goes to show that you don't need the latest and greatest with all sorts of electronic wizardry to have fun on a motorcycle. After all, the fun of riding a motorcycle is how it makes you feel, not how much electronics you've got, or even how much power. Riding the Yamaha puts a silly grin on my face, and it's really quite fun to have to concentrate on gear changes when you're going up a hill. You have to ride this bike, it doesn't ride you. So as the Yamaha rushes quickly by, 
I have to again thank Norman for allowing me to ride one of his beautiful motorcycles.